Hello. Uh, welcome to Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Uh, not Rift Apart. That's the next one. <laughs> uh, into the Nexus. Uh, this is New Game Plus, which means we have all of our weapons and upgrades and all these things, and we're going through um, same as you would the entire game, uh, but with all these spick and span uh, good weapons. So, uh, there's a lot to explain, we'll get to that as we progress through the run, um, but as it stands, uh, I think I'm ready to start. So if you're good well, on the if you're good on the timer, Dan, I'll count down yeah, from three. Count down. Easy. Three, two, one, start. Right oh. So right good luck. Thank you, man. Uh, right away, we're gonna clip out of bounds. Uh, <laughs> Using our primary weapon for this run, the Nightmare Box. Uh, the Nightmare Box shoots a little Jack in a Box uh, that pops up and pushes uh, you around um, when it when it pops up. Normally, it's meant to scare enemies, but uh, let's be real, we don't need to scare enemies when we have gigantic weapons that one-shot them. So the the primary usage of this weapon is going to be ooh, uh, that is actually really not good. Um, that is incredibly bad, actually. Oh, God. Um, what we're gonna do is that. Okay, so. Uh, that is probably the worst thing that can happen at the start of the game. Uh, but we're going to just roll with it. So. Marathon luck. Yeah, that is incredibly just marathon luck right there. So, the thing about the Nightmare Box is that it clips you out of now and all that. Usually it's pretty precise to do that, and you need to have certain setups, but uh, it's sort of a one in a million that when you try and do a certain type of movement tech with it, where you try and gain speed using um, the push out effect, uh, it can force you into walls that are next to you. I've never had that happen in three and a half years of running this game, so that's, you know, it's great luck to have on a marathon, but what we're going to do instead of climbing up the back of the ship and skipping this particular section is we're going to just do this casually. Um, so what, what we'll do here is we'll just power up Vendra's cell. Um, Story-wise, this is our prisoner. We're on a prison ship right now, and we're transporting her because she has like seven life sentences or something. Pretty high, high priority cargo. Um, but she's been messing with the electronics uh, in this ship, so we have to fix the ship and make sure that she can't use her powers um, to to mess it up any further. Proton field restored. So yeah, we might be a little close on the estimate because of that, because this this takes about two and a half, three minutes or whatever. Um, but you know that's that's extra pressure. You know that's. Uh, something I can use as a motivator. So, the door's gonna open here, and we're going to go out the airlock. There we go. So this is our objective, is to turn this bolt crank and restore all the power to the ship. Um, and that's where we would climb up to if we went out of bounds properly and went back up instead of that one in a million out of bounds thing um, that happened earlier. So, in these cutscenes right here, uh, Vendra gets broken out um, of the ship by her brother, who is also, again, notorious criminal, and uh, Nefton uh, hires the Thugs for Less, which are just a group of mercenaries to try and take down Ratchet in the process. So, what they've also done is taken captive uh, some of our friends that were piloting the ship, and we need to make our way back to them. Luckily, going down is quicker than, uh, much easier than going up. So, we can just traverse our way down. Normally, we'd have to go back through the ship in the section that you saw earlier, but um, we're able to get off mag ramps and pretty much move around wherever we want. And of course, we have the nightmare box in case uh, we get into a sticky situation, which doesn't seem to happen here. So the reason I had to switch difficulty and do all those things earlier is because uh, just an unfortunate side effect of the checkpoints that we have to hit on this stage um, is that they will lock you onto the mag ramps and there is no way to get properly out of bounds um, once you are locked onto a mag ramp. 
you have to get onto a surface that will deactivate it temporarily and then move backwards outside of airlocks and all that. They are gone, Ratchet. We are not safe out so in that cutscene, unfortunately, um, Nefton and Vendra just blew up our friends and the entire ship in the process, so we have to escape uh, from the folks who are trying to molest them. And these mag ramp sections are very, very inconvenient, so you have to hold L1 and then uh, make sure your cursor's over it. And the camera is not very generous uh, with Ratchet's positions when it comes to this section. And we'll do a little skip here where we can go through a wall because that doesn't count as mag ramp collision, so if you're able to phase right through it. And we are at the end of Nebulox, which is the first of the six sections in the run. I'm actually going to... See what my time is. Maybe like a five something. Actually, no, this isn't too bad. So I lost about a minute and a half um, uh, to that mistake earlier, which still should be comfortable with the estimate. <laughs> uh, for reference, the record is 2027, 20, and uh, it, this game is fairly consistent, other than a few little minor tricks that can be a bit. Uh, precise. Uh, one of them is actually right here on planet Yarrick, so this this is where we crash landed after boarding one of the thug ships. Um, you can see this little branch here, we're going to land on it, or not. That only has about like one ratchet foot sort of <laughs> collision on it, and even if you set it up, a uh, little mistiming on the glide will prevent you from landing on it. There we go. So the purpose of landing on that branch is that it gets us under an invisible wall and then we can go on that pipe to high jump and get out of bounds. So just like that. Uh, the way the levels are designed in Ratchet and Clank is that they're pretty circular. So as the, the great Jay Hobbs once said, uh, the beginning is at the end. And you know, like you can take that as a philosophical lesson, but in this case it really helps with routing and figuring out how these games work. As long as you get the basic idea that we're trying to traverse to the end of the level and the end of the level is usually right next to us. We just need to find the quickest way to get um, a little bit of height or a little bit of distance. Uh, one of the things I did earlier with the Nightmare Box is a dead launch, so I backflipped into it as it popped up. Instead of clipping us like through a wall or something, that just gives us basic momentum. And we can backflip and treat ourselves like a like a swing, uh, slingshot or something and push us further along. What we're going to do here is another clip. Nice, got a good one. So here at the Miro Orphanage, this is where our objective is. We have tracked down Vendra and Nefton to this point. Um, normally you'd have to load in a bunch of things out of bounds, do some clank sections and all that, but when we jumped into the corner there at the back of the Orphanage, um, that loaded the second half in the cave section, and that in turn, because it's a change trigger, um, gives us our ship and the coordinates to another planet. It's a little hard to understand um, how much is being skipped if you haven't played this game before. Um, the basic progression of a, of a Ratchet & Clank game like this is that you get gadgets that will help you uh, traverse pieces of terrain or open up doors and all that. Uh, in this case we skipped two on that planet, the Grab Tether, which is like the excursion funnels in Portal 2 if you... Like that's probably my best sort of comparison. Um, and the Rift Cracker, which is opens up clank puzzles for us to do, which will shift gravity. Um, even though we skipped that, we will still have to use that later on in the run, but the game gives it to us when we need it, which is uh, extremely handy. So this is the arena section on Crag. This is one of the info bots we picked up earlier on uh, Yerik, and it's pretty much what you see. So we're throwing out singularities here, which are just black holes um, that will insta-kill small enemies. Since all of these enemies are small enemies, uh, they will die instantly. Um, unfortunately, they can only cover three at a time, so we cover five of these pods, and the sixth one is the Rhino, which um, is a missile firing super weapon to clean up all the mess. And we'll have, we'll have another one of these challenges that's very, very similar. So, a good time for donations. Yeah, we can do that. We have a couple here. Uh, we got $2 from Mega Slayer saying we beat it. 
And we got a $31, a $31 anonymous donation that just says, no, you don't, Steve. Uh, for anyone just tuning in, we are All Speedruns, a group doing speedrun events to raise money for charity. For this event, we're raising money for Beyond Blue, a charity working to raise the awareness of mental health issues and reduce the stigma around those issues to help people achieve their best possible mental health. If you'd like to donate, you can go to donate.allspeedruns.com or you can type exclamation mark and donate in chat to get the link. Um, there are incentives that you can donate towards as well if you want to do make sure to include that in your comment we're doing pretty well on a lot of the incentives but there's still a ratchet plank ripped apart uh category change to new game plus all gold bolts that's still open and we could use another 300 dollars to meet that before the end of this run um there's a Bioshock 2 play asteroids incentive. That's oh no no that's been met yeah that, that was met just at the end of your that last run yeah so we're doing no, well. Um, so the only other one is the world's hardest game um, as a bonus game right at the end, which is already got uh, one thousand five hundred and forty nine dollars out of two thousand, which is a massive amount. We can definitely get that one. Mate. It'd be a great way to close out the marathon. Hell yeah! And I guess to get back to the game. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I, I mean, they're boring arena challenges. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I can't cut it any other way. Uh, that was a mini boss there. The first mini boss of the run, the uh, the Blaze Bot. Uh, as you can see, I just mowed it down with the Rhino. The Rhino is ridiculous in this game. It shoots a million gazillion rockets per second and melts anything. The only problem with that enemy is um, it puts up a shield, um, which... Which does, in fact, block every projectile, unless you get around it. That's the only thing you have to wait for. Um, because of my mistake earlier, I also had to manage my difficulty a bit uh, differently. So I wasn't on the easiest difficulty for that, luckily. It doesn't matter that much in this category. If it was another category, I would have had to do some tricky uh, switching elsewhere. Luckily, New Game Plus, you sort of melt everything, regardless of, uh, regardless of the difficulty. So, it's not too much of a hindrance to us. So, here on Silox, we are going out of bounds immediately, as you can see. Uh, that's not very good. Our objective is to get to the second half of the stage. Um, it's a linear, sort of just city traversal area. We go through a small sewer section. Um, and we're trying to hunt down Vendr uh, Nefton again, because they might have the ability to open up holes and dimensions, which... If you think about Rift Apart, that is uh, a plot point reused once again, but the... There we go. The way this level is designed is that uh, we need to hit certain triggers that will load in second parts of the stage. Uh, right there, I did a wrench swing downwards and then I waited for vines to appear on the wall. So that is an indicator that tells me that the There's second the half of the stage is loaded. Um, I am in a bit of a tricky position right now. There we go. And what I did there was a box stand, which, uh, the Nightmare box is incredibly versatile. It allows me to get a little bit of extra height since I can stand on the back of it, on the little key section, and, uh, get up to this relay station platform here. But yeah, the, the purpose of what I was doing in that out of bounds section is I want to get to... Uh, the load triggers that will allow me to um, to hit the checkpoints necessary to complete the stage. Because you can go pretty much anywhere you want, but as long as you, if you don't hit the proper triggers, then you're not going to actually hit the cutscenes or any other coordinates you need. Uh, here again, the relay sec uh, station section, very similar to the arena. A few mini bosses. There, that was a blinking you miss it. Uh, I threw a singularity there that will taken the mini boss. Normally that's not meant to happen. It's like a 50% chance that it'll get sucked in. I don't really know why singularities are so random, but in that case that completely kills the mini boss for us and saves a few seconds. And we are going to uh, do the corn dog, fly without clank. See, look at him, right? It's just vibing. <laughs> And there we go, Clank's back. So, one of the things we got on the Arena Planet, Crag, was uh, the jetpack. 
The jetpack has a limited amount of fuel and can only go in certain sections, so we see our full fuel just deplenished there. But it gets us on top of here, where we can clip through and jump right down to the train station. So this is our ultimate goal, this is where Bender yeah, and Nepton are, the train station here. Uh, there is a long sewer section, a bunch of like mini boss things and bolt cranks we have to turn. This saves like six minutes of casual gameplay. But we're able to go straight to the Nefton fight and then immediately vaporize him with the Rhino. Nefton, I know you don't want to do this. Normally that's a two-phase fight, but we do so much damage that we kill him before the iframes um, for his second phase even start. And we are going to turn to our ship here. So what happened in the cutscene is that uh, they managed to successfully uh, use the Dimensionator to open a portal into another world. You see that guy up there. That's the final boss. Uh, we'll be getting to him in about 10 minutes or so. And what we need to do is escape while all of these uh, nether enemies uh, invade the city. So again, another example of using the jetpack a little bit further than expected. We're going to do some rockets here and finish up this combat section. Ooh, didn't kill the enemy with that. That's alright. There we go. So after that section, uh, we get teleported back to our ship and we go on uh, and get the coordinates to Planet Thram. So the, the boss we just defeated, we kind of need him on our side because he's strong and he knows what Vendra's plan is. Because Vendra just got captured by um, the big guy in the sky there. And Planet Thram has two objectives. One, find Nefton and get the coordinates to the final planet, and two, get the hover boots. The hover boots are a gadget that allow us to traverse along the ground really, really quickly. Um, but they require ten Gargathon horns to um, trade him with the smuggler here. Now my boy Smugs, uh, we'll get to him in a minute. We're going to backtrack through the stage because these little plants here are solid. And it's also just quicker to get the Gargathon horns from the big Gargathons here. They drop three, while the bones drop one. Ooh, so close. And then that, that's exactly what happened in my GDQ run. Um, if I get a good den launch there, I can go straight to the coordinates and save 10 seconds or so. Um, instead, we have to do the Climb of Shame on the rocks. Uh, ooh. Buddy. Hey, buddy. Puts us on a bad cycle. There we go. So we can die, and that will collect all the horns that are currently loaded um, and free, so we don't have to wait around. Uh, the death there conveniently spawns us next to the smuggler, because of how the death checkpoints work. And we talk to him twice, and difficulty switch. If you talk to him once in difficulty switch, he doesn't give you the hover boots. I don't know why talking to him twice works, but it's just weird. Normally there's like a tutorial cutscene and all that that he explains things about the hover boots, but it just saves us some time getting back up to the ship. Woo-wee! So this is the final planet, Planet Igliac. Uh, we've got our... Uh, we've got Nefton, we've got a plan to get the Dimensionator that uh, was in one of the first future games, Tools of Destruction, which is currently being housed in this museum. So normally we have to cart around a tour bot that will open doors for us, but we don't need doors to be opened when we have the Nightmare Box, which ignores doors entirely. So we can just clip out and we are out of bounds right now. There's a mini boss like off in the distance there, but we can jump up and load in the second half of the museum and clip through this door. And now we are in one of the final parts of the museum. We haven't needed to use the tour bot yet, but uh, we will need to use the tour bot here to open uh, some doors and force some objectives well, to work. Also, I made a little mistake with my difficulty switching there. Um, but the it'll be fine. Weapon its in fact, into a no, that's, it's probably for the better right now. So here, this worse, is one spot we need to definitely use the tour bot um, right there. Because that is a necessary trigger for this cutscene to activate. So you'll see here, cutscene, blink and you miss it, I skipped it. And this elevator here only activates when you have the tour bot. So we can fall down here. We skip the elevator itself and we have to kill five enemies in the uh, final room of the museum. There we go. And now it's down to the city center where the big 
uh, the big nethers have come out to play. Again, another difficulty switch here because that skips a cutscene. So normally I would change to hero difficulty here instead of cadet. Cadet is the lowest difficulty. Um, and obviously that means enemies have less health on it. Uh, we would normally change to hero to do a specific trick in one of the final plank sections that are coming up here, but because I'm not really <laughs> on good pace right now, I don't want to risk losing potentially a minute to that trick, so I'm going to just take it safe and take the 15 second hit instead. Righto, so I've just gone through the ceiling of this tube here, and normally you'd have to defeat four big enemies um, to open up the tube and get the final boss to where he needs to be but for some reason if you just glide down in that that ceiling there it'll allow you to fall into the uh, freeway and I have no idea why that really works but it does save us probably about a minute of traversing around and defeating enemies the final boss again the rhino does a ridiculous amount of damage and allows us to take down the first phase really quickly here we are going on to the first of two plank sections. So we don't have the Rift Tracker, but we... The game has a failsafe here, just in case, and it just spawns you into the section anyway. Also, uh, since this run is about to end, uh, you should probably donate for the NG Plus All Gold Bolt uh, incentive for Rift Apart, which is the next run, which I will also be doing. I like NG Plus All Gold Bolts. There's a bunch of extra little things you have to do. It adds a lot of flavor to the run. It's a 25 hidden collectibles that are scattered around the game and adds about 20 minutes. So if you want to see that, get your money in, get your incentives done. Uh, so what we've done here is clip out of bounds using a box um, that has strange collision properties. Uh, I will probably explain that in the second plank section, but for now what we're doing is we're releasing one of the nethers and then just traversing back to Vendra. Vendra is in the center of the stage, she's in a prism. Those nethers um, act as like bombs and they will explode part of the prison cell. It worked. Bring me another. And as you can see here, we have almost freed her from her prison there, but we have to go back to a ratchet section and defeat the second phase of the boss. We make very, very quick work of it um, with the Rhino. So here in the second section is uh, another little out of bounds trick here. On hero difficulty there will be uh, an enemy that I could clip out of bounds with here, but we are going to just keep moving and use something later on in the stage, which is a little bit slower but a lot easier. So the way clipping works is that when Clank is gliding, he doesn't have proper momentum, so to say. Or, sorry, proper hitboxes. Um, so when you stop gliding, he'll suddenly gain his hitbox back. And because you're currently in an object, it'll push you downwards um, wherever you're facing right now. So what we've done is gone out of bounds by pushing ourselves downwards and out. Since we can change gravity. And again... Uh, circular design of this means we can just get the nether, fall back down, the vendor cutscene trigger is extending way beyond her actual prison, and we are on the final phase. Time is coming up in about 5 seconds. <laughs> and... time. There we go. Nicely done. Thank you. I don't want to know what time I got. <laughs> that was at 23.04. That was pretty good for the mistake I made. Uh, for the way the game treated you at the start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pulled it back nicely. That, that was, that's basically my worst nightmare, um, getting mistake <laughs> on that section, because you cannot recover that if you fall. So you have to take the yeah. time hit. Um, but, you know, hopefully that is the only time that ever happens in a marathon while running this game. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was Into the Nexus. That is a... Uh, Short but sweet, sort of out of bounds, very intensive uh, platforming adventure. Uh, if you want to run that game, I recommend going to speedrun.com slash rack, R-A-C, and going to the Discord on the sidebar.
Okay, and then I guess next up we'll be back soon with Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Mm hmm. Donate for NG plus AGB. Do it right now. Right now. Do it right now. Before Softies tells oh, me oh. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs>